What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am building yet another computer. Shocker, I know. Uh, this time it's for my beautiful wife, Heather, who's in the other room right now. Her system currently is, uh, well I had to gut her system actually uh, about a month or two ago because I had to use some of the parts uh, for my dad's PC at the time. Um, and she wasn't really using her desktop all that much so I felt it would be appropriate to kind of rob her of the computer I had initially given her two Christmases ago. Uh, but Shortly after that, she uh, started indicating that she was missing her old desktop, and so now it's time that I finally built her a proper new one. Um, so that's what we're doing today. I've actually compiled a, a, a list of new and used parts, uh, including everything that's on this table. Uh, and I'm just going to start off with the case here. This is brand new. I just bought this. I picked it up off of Newegg. It was kind of an impulse buy, but I thought it would uh, kind of match the dimensions of the BitPhoenix Prodigy. It's actually shorter and slimmer than the Prodigy, but it's a, I think it's like an inch or two longer, but more or less it's about the same dimensions. I just think it looks a little bit sleek. The other thing about the BitPhoenix Prodigy, it's got those rubber handles on the top and bottom. Those tend to get dirty pretty quickly over time, and they get more, more and more difficult to clean uh, because of the rubbery material. You can't just, you know, go over a with a, like a wet wipe or a paper towel or anything. You gotta get like one of those magic erasers. It's just kind of a hassle. Also, I thought I'd bling it up a little bit with a side panel window, which the Prodigy did not have. Uh, so we get to be a little bit more fancy this time around. So, so that should be nice. Uh, power supply is also brand new. It's a Seasonic M12 II. I've actually never used this before, but I found it on Newegg. Um, it, it is fully modular, 520 watt power supply. You guys should je definitely check this out if you're on a budget uh, and you're looking for a fully modular unit because this was only 60 or 70 bucks, which I thought was a killer deal, especially Seasonic is a great brand for power supplies, so I'll be using that as well. We've got uh, BitPhoenix Alchemy uh, LED strip, just a simple, uh, this is the Alchemy 1.0. I might be using a 2.0 that I've got tucked away in the closet somewhere if I can find a good place to put it uh, inside of the case. We've also got more BitPhoenix uh, cables here, the white extension sleeves. These, these are the original sleeves that I've used for my very first PC I built in the uh, 600T. Um, and don't don't confuse this build with the all white build that I was teasing earlier uh, in previous videos, guys, or on social media, because this is not it. This is just a, a wife uh, a wife build, if you will. Um, the the white the all white themed PC is coming soon. I guarantee it. Uh, so probably pop up sometime in November, and I'll be using these again for that build as well. But I uh, thought it would go really nice, of course, with the white enclosure here. And then moving on to CPU and motherboard. This is actually used. Um, this is another used part. Two very main used parts, uh, including the, the, the H105 that's already on here. Uh, the reason why it's already installed is because I just took this out of a different system. It was in the uh, the half 912, uh, one of the, the half stackers that I use currently. I uh, have stripped it out, as you can see, uh, for this 2600K and uh, the, the uh, P8Z77i deluxe motherboard. So we are rocking an older generation of uh, chipset as well as uh, a generation of Intel CPU, but 2600K is still a great CPU. We shouldn't have too many issues with that, especially for the you know limited workload that uh, Heather's going to be using uh, for, on a day-to-day -day basis. Should be just fine. It's still a great CPU. We've also got 8 gigs of RAM. This is Corsair Vengeance. Matches in blue, of course. Very nice. 1600 speed. This should do the job just fine. And uh, for graphics, we have this GTX 970. Now, uh, you shouldn't worry about any kind of bottlenecking the, the, with the uh, CPU because, oh, by the way, it's EVGA. This is their For the Win Edition. There you go, so it comes factory overclocked. But you shouldn't worry about any kind of bottlenecking issues. Um, the 2600K, again, even if it's stock and not overclocked, shouldn't be an issue. Other than that, we've got uh, these two Venturi HP fans. These are 120s. These, these are just gonna be slapping onto the, uh, the H105 because the Corsair fans that it comes with can get a little bit louder than, than I'd like. Um, and these uh, Venturi fans have been really happy with how they've been performing in Hotline back there. So I, I had two extras, thought I would slap them in. Also, I think the, the sleek black look would kind of match uh, the overall aesthetic a bit more proper. Uh, and then we've got this other fractal fan. It's a Venturi, no, it's not a Venturi. This is one of the case fans that I got off of the Define R5, I believe. Uh, it's just a 140 and there is a 140 mount at the back of the Enthu uh, Evolve ITX. I don't even know if I even mentioned the name of this case. It's the Enthu Evolve ITX right there. And I think that's pretty much, those are all the parts for this build. Uh, hopefully it goes smoothly. And why don't we just go ahead and jump into it and start building this thing.
just a quick update. Uh, I did kind of want to log or document some of my experiences that I've been having so far when building in the uh, the Evolve ITX. Um, so first off, this case does feature a pull-out bracket for a 240 or 280 millimeter radiator on top. Uh, so you can do a quick and easy installation kind of outside of the case first. Uh, you know, mount the radiator and fans to the bracket and then slide it in. Um, but what they don't tell you is that you can't have the motherboard installed first, otherwise the tubing isn't really long enough to get the radiator and the bracket sl uh, slid into place into the uh, the grooves of the metal frame up here. So, uh, and then and then alternately, you can't really have the motherboard uninstalled and then install the radiator first because then you can't reach the top two screws very easily uh, to mount down the motherboard. In fact, this one you can't reach at all. You can you can get by with this this screw over here. Uh, so what I ended up having to do was remove the top panel entirely uh, and leave the radiator bracket installed and just mount the radiator to the top like you would in any other normal uh, case that supports 240 rads up top. So that was kind of inconvenient. Uh, the other thing is that, and I already, I already knew this going into the build but I forgot to mention it, uh, is that the motherboard only has two fan headers, one for the CPU and only one other system fan header. They're there on the top left corner, you can kind of see them. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of splitter action. I've got some, uh, some Y splitters. They are PWM thanks to the Venturi fractal fans uh, which which each fan comes with a, a fan splitter and I had like like 12 of these fans for hotline and, and uh, other things so I'm basically just doing a kind of like uh, I don't know adapter frenzy here I'm gonna be plugging this into uh, one of those system fan headers and I've got two more splitters coming off of each of those uh, one one fan header should be enough to drive all four of these fans it shouldn't be an issue uh, so I've got four case fans or let's say I've got two of these I've got one 200 millimeter that the case comes with at the front, and I'm installing this 140. So yeah, I've got four case fans in here for the most part, and then I'm gonna need one for the, the pump for the H105. So that should be good. I think I'm gonna be set for that. Uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention is storage. You're probably like, Where, what happened to the storage? Why didn't you mention storage? Well, it's because I actually don't have a good reason for that, other than I completely forgot. Uh, to put it on the table, so I forgot to talk about it. Uh, what am I going to be using? This is kind of just, I haven't even given it this any forethought. I'll probably use this Vertex 4, it's a 128 gig SSD from OCZ. It's an older SSD, but it should be fine for Heather. Uh, and then I've got, let's see, ow, this uh, hard drive from Toshiba. This is a 1.5 terabyte, I believe. No, it's two terabytes, so she gets two terabytes of storage uh, mechanically. And I'm just gonna leave this out right here so I don't forget it a second time. So she gets one SSD and one mechanical, and she should be happy with that. If she's not, then she can suck it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, honey, I love you. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say, give you a little update, and now let's go back to the build. Go!
Alright, build complete, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. Feast your eyes on this beauty. As you can see, I did try to color coordinate it as best I could, uh, you know, as you saw with the white cables and kind of the blue, the blue on the video card, the blue RAM and the the, uh, the CPU cooler and the motherboard and things like that. Um, I wasn't able to get the LED in there just because there wasn't any good place to put it. Even the, the shorter 12 centimeter one I had just wasn't able to fit anywhere reasonably. Uh, you can't really put it on the side panel because the window is so damn huge. And even if I were to kind of put the LED strip maybe on the edge here, even the really outer edge, you could still see the LEDs quite easily through that big ass window. So uh, I think it still looks good without it. You know, that just would have been a nice cherry on top, but what can you do? Um, apart from that, everything else went well. Uh, building in the system was absolutely fantastic for a Mini ITX. Uh, granted, it is fairly large for a Mini ITX compared to like an SG05 or something like that. Um, but obviously you can do a lot more here, you know, custom water cooling and things like that. Uh, but one thing I did not like about this case, other than the radiator bracket, um, not being able to, to go in with these, the, the, you know, the tube length on this H105, which I expressed earlier, but this top panel here, which I had to remove to, again, install the radiator, um, it has like 16 screws that you have to remove before you can take off that damn front panel or that top panel, which is really annoying. I actually had to uh, pop it off one more time unexpectedly because I had to route the USB 3.0 cable uh, right above there because it wasn't long enough to go the other way. And I just had to like undo like 16 screws again. And it was just a, a huge pain in the ass. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, but apart from that, this is a really nice little mini ITX case and hopefully my wife uh, get some good performance out of this thing. Hopefully it serves her well. Uh, I know she isn't going to be gaming on it too much, but if she does, when she does, she'll be well equipped, uh, I would imagine, uh, with the hardware that I've given her today. So, is there anything else I wanted to say about this system build before we close out? No, I don't think so. Um, but that's going to do it for now, guys. Be sure to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a lot of more, a lot more good content coming very soon. Uh, so be sure to stay tuned for that. As always, I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network, and I will see you guys in the next video.